Hi everybody and uh, welcome to my channel. This is my first video where I'm actually narrating drawing, so bear with me if it's a little weird. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to draw uh, a lion in a furry style. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and get started. So I'm using Clip Studio Paint. I also have a graphics tablet. Um, you can probably do this with just a pencil and uh, paper if you don't have those materials. Um, it's always great to get started with pencil because then once you transition to uh, digital art you kind of have a foundation in uh, tactile drawing. So when I start, I almost always start with drawing a circle um, for the head. Um, from there I can base off the expression and the pose and whatever else. Um, I usually also draw in uh, two lines for where generally the eyes are going to be. Um, now I'm going to try drawing a lion, so I'm going to start with the ears. They're kind of small and rounded uh, compared to like cat ears or wolf ears. Um, <coughs> And then I'm going to kind of circle in areas for the eyes. Now I usually make these like a lot bigger than they need to be because what I'm going to do is put in the eyebrows on the top there and then the eyes in smaller. So what I'm really drawing is the eye sockets right there. Um, so then from there I'm going to start refining the circle, put in a little bit of forehead, um, cheek right there. So this is like a three quarters angle drawing here and then I'm going to start drawing in the muzzle. So with a lion you have a, a bit more of a longer muscle than say like a domestic house cat or uh, a small cat like a bobcat or a cat like a cheetah. Um, <coughs> and then I usually do a small triangle kind of a little bit wider for a lion than for other cats and then I kind of make rounded almost circular shapes for the muzzle. Now um, I'm going to keep that kind of loose and rounded, making another kind of almost circle shape for the chin, and then bring that all the way back and connect it to the jaw here, which is going to be kind of a mixture of fluffy cheek stuff and kind of a jaw shape. Um, start putting in detail like in ears and whatnot. Make this kind of curve around a little bit so you get a little bit of that three-dimensional effect. Um, now I'm going to start putting in the eyebrows here. So they're kind of in above the eye socket here. And then I'm going to start working in the actual eyes. So I do the outline of the eyes first and then I start working in things like eyebrows. So in this angle here, I don't just draw two eyes that are the same angle. I draw a little bit kind of this one's a little tilted a little bit so you get kind of like an angled eye if that makes sense um, and then if you want eye contact with the character you kind of got to draw in the eyes like so I always find eye contact to actually be a little more, more challenging than people would expect um, <coughs> to get that pupil looking directly at you, it's not as easy as it seems. So I'm taking my eraser brush and I'm kind of just going in and lightening up some areas to make it a little more clear. Kind of connecting the bottom of the nose with the muzzle. The lions have a little bit of a darker area on the bottom of their mouth. I'm gonna, for stylistic purposes, I'm not going to totally put that in. A little bit of fluffy on their chin. Um, start working in the neck hair. And then I'm going to start working in hair. Put the nostrils in. Maybe refine the nose a little bit so you got a little more bump there. Give a little bit of refined detail. Sometimes it's all about subtlety. So what I'm going to do now is flip it. And now I flip things a lot. I find them really helpful in maintaining symmetry and making not, things not look wonky. So from there, I'm going to flip and I'm just going to keep drawing. So when I flip back to the original, it will look a little bit more on point. So I'm finding this a little bit narrower than what I normally draw. 
So what I might end up doing is taking this area here and using my just magic wand tool, pressing Control T and moving it over a little bit. And from there, you can just hit OK and then Control D to deselect. And kind of refine that a little bit now. Does that look better? I don't know. Now his eyes are too wide. Who cares? Uh, this guy's eyes should be more oval the other way. It's all trial and error, really. What I'm doing here is now same thing, but this time I was looking at how does the inside of the eye line up with the corner of the nose here. And that way you can get kind of more of an accurate actual lion muzzle going on. So now going to round this a little bit, adding some of the dots. I don't really should, shouldn't really add detail at this point. It's something just can't help it. I'm just going to have fun with it. <coughs> Alright, so now we're going to go back and try the hair again. I don't normally do this, but I'm going to try this on a different layer because it starts out weird. I can just move it around and make it look a little better. So this is the lady lion, lioness. So I'm going to use a nice long hair. Start with the part in the middle and the front. And from there, you can kind of move on. Gesturally, kind of just, you want to work with flow first rather than details. You can always work in detail later, but flow is really what you want to do first. So you want to start building it out, just kind of soft rounded edges on the side there. Add more flow in down here. Kind of imagine how this is going to run behind the ear. Normally I would not draw that over the ear, but I think it's better to vi help you visualize how that's going to turn out. Uh, control Z a little bit there. And we'll start adding that in there. And now I'm going to start putting in a little bit of shoulder work here, and a little bit of shading. She's kind of chunky. Easy cut muscular. Curl that up. Get the hair all kind of wavy. I need a little bit of shading because when I started to ink, it'll help me figure out what's in the background and what's in the foreground. What I'm going to keep, what I don't. And I'm still just using the pencil tool. If I was uh, using a regular pencil, I'd be using a uh, mechanical pencil for the detail work and then switching to a regular HB pencil with a sharpener. Now, I think this head is pretty good, so I'm just going to erase underneath the hair a little bit. And then I'm going to right click on the top hair layer. So right click and select merge the layer below and that will combine my sketch together into one sketch. I don't know, maybe I should give her a shirt, probably. So I'm gonna give her a little v-neck. It's kind of fluff. Right here. Alright, shoulder is retarded, so no. Okay. Strap. And there we go. Flip this the other way so it doesn't look too weird. Oh, she looks like she's gonna pre bench press somebody. That's cool. I think that's what she likes to do. She's a lioness after all. She's strong. Strong woman with no meat, no man. Sometimes you start drawing and you're like, what do I do with the arms? I don't know. I should have thought about this before I started drawing. So, I'm kind of just going to make her hands go up and way below. Super awkward. Doesn't matter. So, I kind of just wanted to sneak an arm in here. Flipping again. And so, with hands, I usually do human based hands with kind of a thicker anthroer, anthroe kind of fingers to them. No, that's not, oops, let's try this again. 
take a lot of my hand poses actually from old fine art poses. So I think some of the old painters had some really good ideas on what to do with art. And hands at art, I should say. So you have this fleshy piece here, that's the thumb. The little piece, that little thing underneath the thumb. You can pinch that. And then the other side is the little chunky thing under the pinky. And then the line on top here, and then you have the palm. So what I've done here is I've made a pinky, but it's kind of chunkier at the end. And then I add a paw pad there, and then add a little bit. Ring finger, little finger. Little finger, I'll flip that. Does that look okay? I don't know. Looks like the palm is a little too low. So I'm going to darken the area where I believe the finger is going to end and kind of erase down there. So. You don't need to draw the finger all the way to the end of the root. You can kind of just kind of draw mostly there and then draw some darker shadow. And sometimes that gives the better illusion of separating fingers. And drawing around, I draw very heavy fingertips with felines and canines because they have bigger paws. Kind of combining a heavy paw with a human finger. So kind of got to get a little bit of both in there. Okay. Thumbs are always a little difficult. But I'll make it look like she's not kind of twisting out. Just making sure I didn't actually draw the hand the wrong way. So we're going to work on this paw a little bit more. Maybe make this thumb a little less weird. Thumbs are always difficult. Why are they like that? I don't know. Alright, good enough. Let's give her a bracelet. A little bit of jewelry. And the detail work. So, trying to uh, leave that in below the uh, fluff. Mm. Refine her neck a little bit so it doesn't look so heavy, and that gives her a little bit more feminine look to it. You don't want thick necks if you want a feminine character. It's a little, it's a little, a little more subtle. Thicker necks mean more muscle. More muscle means they're more masculine. Refine the character a little bit. So I know what I'm writing is she looks a little bit more girly. Sorry if I'm talking too quietly. <clears throat> and then we refine that a little bit more. Add a little more shading. And when you go around the wrist like this, let me zoom in here. When you go around shading on the wrist like this, you don't just want to do a line like that. You want to get a kind of a hook at the end, right at the edge, because that's where things curve, is right at the edge right there. And then you shade that around, and that way you get a little bit more of an illusion of curve, rather than just kind of, oh, it's a line on top of a wrist. That's one of those things that took me a long time to learn. Put some shading in the back. This will make the front pop out a little more if you make the back dark or gray, depending on your angle. If you're painting, sometimes making things in the gray, in the background, it makes the foreground pop a little bit more. Put a little bit of separate layer on that, but it's more advanced stuff. I don't know if you guys are there yet. Who knows? I think there's a lot of tutorials out there that are very simple, but they don't really go into the really good, fun stuff. Like, make the details of something look good, you know? You can draw mostly okay. Well, I'm missing something. Sometimes it's a detail. Sometimes it's how you draw a curve. Sometimes it's how you shade something. Sometimes it's just 
the weight of a pencil stroke. Just gotta keep practicing and practicing and practicing and practicing and practicing. Don't be able to be crazy. Be like, I don't have any social life anymore because all I do is draw. Welcome to my life. Do I want to give her claws? Well, cats have retreated the claws, so it's not necessary to give her claws, but sometimes they do just because they're cats. I mean, it's cool to have a claw. So, a little bit of curve in there. And start shading a little bit. One more time. This is a dude where you're gonna grab me in the eyes. Alright, I think I've gotten most of that in there. Give her a little backside so she's not floating off in the ether there. And maybe a little bit of tail. Kind of square tip at the end. Sneaky kind of kitty tail. A little bit of a fluff on the edge there. You just put the fluff on the edge. You don't need to draw fur on every single angle of your character. You only need to suggest it on the edges where there are the most angles. So where a fur would be sticking out the most, like if you watch your cat's tail, and they kind of curve at the end, and the fluff kind of sticks out more on the angle See right here where it's curving, that's where it fl fluffs out more. So this part here where it's curving, you don't really need that because the direction of the fur is kind of laying against each other. So if you leave it straight, you get the illusion of soft fur on that side. But in areas where it's curving outward, like here, you can get put in a little bit of fluff. And that'll help give the illusion of fur without having to draw single strands of fur for every single line on your drawing. So maybe I'll put some fluffy at the end here. Use a negative space. Fluff, fluff, fluff. Hope you guys can see that okay. And erase that. And erase. Okay, okay. I'm going to stick this, or keep this, just a sketch for today. Keep making a little bit more shading. Value is very important. Should be one of the first things you really focus on as an artist is black and white value. What is shading and dark? How does it differentiate your character from the background? Very, very important, very helpful. Focus on that early, along with basic shapes. Before you get to color, because color is really complicated. Okay, thank you for watching my video. Um, if you watch the whole thing, I'm amazed. Uh, follow me. I'm just starting to put stuff in my channel. Um, I plan to add a lot more tutorials. Maybe someday over Patreon. Who knows? Um, thanks again for watching. Bye bye.